Hello engineers, welcome back to another video. In this video, we are going to discuss facial landmark detection using local binary features. In the previous video, the quiz question that I asked was, who are the inventors of the Haar cascade technique? So the Haar cascade technique was first proposed by Michael Jones and Paul Viola in their paper, Rapid Object Detection using a boosted cascade of simple features. And Chirag answered that question correctly. Now, the question for this video is, what is the difference between classification and regression? You would be able to find the answer to this question in the video itself, or you can refer to the internet for its answer. You are required to answer this question in the comment box below. All right, so now let us start with this video and first have a look at how the facial landmark detection looks like. First, let us have a look at the face landmark detection on its own. Now let us have a look with the face landmark detection along with Delaunay triangulation. Now we are going to discuss facial landmark detection using local binary features. One particular technique that we use to detect facial landmarks is an iterative algorithm. In such an algorithm, we iteratively do computations on a given expression until we converge to a final solution. The iterative calculation that we do is given in this expression over here. For any particular iteration t, we can denote the facial landmarks during that iteration as ST. For the starting iteration, we take a guess of where the facial landmarks would be and those landmarks are denoted by S0. Further iterations are denoted by S1, S2, S3 and any general iteration will be denoted by ST. Now, given an image I and the previously detected landmarks ST-1, we take these values and do some computation over it as we can see over here and calculate the change required for that t minus 1th iteration to go to the tth iteration. As we see over here, delta st is computed and using this delta st, we calculate st that is equal to st minus 1 plus delta st. Now, these two particular functions are of interest to us. Phi is called the projection function and W is a linear transformation function. In mathematical terms, Phi is going to be any non-linear function and W is just a simple matrix multiplication. Intuitively, in our approach, Phi is going to learn the local features around a given landmark and W is going to aggregate those local features into a global shape based on the shape of our faces. Now let us discuss how we learn and calculate these functions w and phi. Since w is a simple matrix multiplication, we can use regression techniques to learn this matrix w. In machine learning language, regression simply refers to learning to predict numerical values. One particular example of regression would be house price prediction. Given the features of a house like the number of bedrooms, the locality and the closeness to market, etc. We can use these features to predict how much that house would cost. Predicting such a numerical value is what constitutes the regression problem. In our particular case, we aim to learn W matrix using this minimization expression over here. This blue term over here represents the error that we have in calculating delta st. This delta s hat t is the actual change that we need to apply and wt phi t is the calculated change. We take the difference, the error, square it and try to find a wt that minimizes this complete expression. But there seems to be one particular problem with minimizing this term. Due to this particular formulation, it has been seen that 
this regression approach overfits the data. What that means that WT has a tendency to learn the facial landmarks of only some particular faces in the complete training set. It would only learn the landmarks of some certain faces and would not be able to generalize on a number of different faces. In order to reduce and penalize this behavior of WT, we add an extra term to this expression lambda times WT squared. This regularization term discourages WT to learn some specific values and instead learn general values. And this kind of regression with the regularization term is called regression with regularization. During real-time testing, WT matrix is easy to compute since we only have to take a matrix multiplication. Now let us see how phi t is learnt. Phi t is actually computed using a machine learning model called regression trees. Regression trees are an extension to an already existing machine learning model called decision trees. Decision trees are mostly used for classification tasks. In classification tasks, we are required to predict the output from a number of different classes. One particular example of a classification problem would be detecting given an image whether it is a cat or a dog. In this particular problem, we have only two classes, cat or dog, and we are required to predict only one of them. Now let us see decision trees in action. In this toy data set, we are given three data classes which are red points, green points and blue points. Apart from these points, given a new point, we would be required to predict to which class that new point belongs, whether it is a red point, a green point or a blue point. Now how a decision tree for this would work? If the new point lies below this blue line, then we would consider that point as a blue point. Otherwise, if it lies above the blue line, we are required to check if that point lies to the left of the red line. If that happens, then that point is a red point. And if the point lies to the right of the green line, then we would predict that that point is a green point. The decision tree structure for the same can be seen over here. Now, decision trees are constructed based on minimization of a given parameter. That parameter is usually entropy or variance. At each step of the construction of the decision tree, we would like to minimize the entropy. That is, bring more order to the given data set. A simple example to learn how this minimization occurs would be to consider that in order to construct these decision boundaries, we require the minimum length possible. Now let us consider two cases for that. We have a horizontal decision boundary and a slightly slanting decision boundary. From both of these boundaries, we would like to select the one that has the minimum length. And as can be seen, compared to the slanting one, the horizontal one would have the minimum length. Hence, we would choose that minimum length decision boundary over that slanting one. And in this way, we minimize our criterion of building decision trees that was to reduce the length of the decision boundaries. Something similar also works when we want to minimize the entropy or the variance. Now, if we want to extend these decision trees to a regression based problem, we use what are called regression trees. Converting this to a regression based problem would mean that we want to predict a corresponding value based on the given different sets of data. One way a regression tree would accomplish this would be taking the average of these data points. Now, regression trees are not that powerful as far as a regression problem is concerned. In order to deal with this, we have an extension to the regression trees called random regression forest. Random regression forest is an ensemble of regression trees. In simple words, an ensemble is a council of different machine learning models. In an ensemble, given an input, all the machine learning models calculate their own individual predictions. 
and the final output is calculated by taking into account all those predictions. This ensemble model helps in increasing the accuracy and the generalizability of the model. A regression forest is generated by randomly sampling data points from the actual data set. In our case, it would mean that we would randomly sample some data points from this complete data set. Then we train a regression tree based on that randomly sampled data. Let's name it tree1. Then in the next step, we again randomly sample data points from this complete data set and train a regression tree on that again, naming it tree2. Similarly, we train n such trees. During final prediction time, given a new data point, we would input that data point to all the entries and then calculate the average value of the predictions of all the trees and give that as a final output. And these random regression forests are what are used to model the projection function phi. For each iteration and for each landmark on the face, we train a random regression forest. The landmarks on a face are categorized by using the pixel difference feature. What that means is that given a single landmark, we calculate the difference of the pixel of that landmark with all the other landmarks. These are the features that we use to learn the landmarks. The random regression forests are formed by randomly sampling pixel difference features. And each of the tree in the forest is trying to predict the location of the landmark on the face. During runtime, we get the value corresponding to the leaf nodes of all these regression trees. And finally, we calculate the average of all these regression tree outputs. And this average value is what constitutes the final prediction of the phi t projection function. Once we have trained these two parameters phi and w, we can finally apply them in an iterative manner to get the landmarks that would be present on a given face image. Alright, so this is all the technical discussion related to the local binary features algorithm. Now let us have a brief look at the code. The link to all the code would be present in the description box below. There are three files in this complete software, which are main.py, camera.py and detector.py. Similar to the architecture we had in our previous video, Har Cascade Detection, we have two threads of program running in the application. The first thread is the camera thread, which captures images from the webcam. And the second thread is the main.py thread that does the actual processing of that image. Here we are reusing the code from our previous video, the Har Cascade Detection. You can have a look at the video from the I button above. Briefly, the work of the Har Cascade Detector is to detect faces in a given camera image. Once those faces have been detected, then we can apply the local binary features technique to get the facial landmarks on our face. So this is the class that contains the code for the Har Cascade Detector. We are using the OpenCV library to detect the faces in an image, which we can see over here. The pre-trained weights have been downloaded from their GitHub repository and we are using them over here. In this class, we have a detect function that returns the coordinates of the face that it has detected, which are the X coordinate of the center, the Y coordinate of the center, the width of the detection and the height of the detection. Then we have this class of facial landmark LBF. This again using OpenCV library detects the facial landmarks. As we can see over here. I have used the pre-trained weights available online. You would get these weights from my GitHub repository as well. In the detect function of the facial landmark class, we pass in the complete image, which is the frame and we pass in the coordinates of where the face is present in the image. This function finally returns a list of landmarks that are going to be present in that image on that face. Finally, we have this another class of Delaunay triangulation. Delaunay triangulation is a computational geometry technique that is 
used to draw triangles between a given set of points and it draws triangles between those points in such a way that it tries to avoid triangles with one or two extremely acute angles once again we have used open cv to get the code for the delaunay triangulation in the function get delaunay in this part of the code we are getting the different triangles that are present in the image and in this for loop we are returning the edges of those triangles finally we return the triangle points which are the edges in the final program now we can discuss the main.py file in the main.py file the first step is to initialize all the different detectors and the triangulation algorithm and then we start our camera thread over here and then we have our while through loop to run this program as long as possible until we press an escape key to exit the program like this over here so the first step in the complete detection pipeline is to detect the face present in the image then we pass that face image to the facial landmark detector and get the landmarks we draw those landmarks on the image and then we pass in the points to the delaunay triangulation algorithm and finally draw those triangles all right so this is all the code that we need to discuss for facial landmark detections so if you like the video press the like button and subscribe to the channel for more such videos and thank you for watching bye